Hey guys, in this video, we will be going to take a look how we can install the MongoDB uh, on our Kubernetes cluster. So for this demonstration, we will be going to use the MongoDB Kubernetes operator. So right now I'm in the official repository of MongoDB Kubernetes operator. And here we'll find some instructions for installing the MongoDB on our Kubernetes cluster. And I have already installed the Kubernetes cluster on my local machine and we can verify it as well. So here if I just run kubectl get nodes, we should see all of my uh, Kubernetes nodes up and running. And as well as I have already downloaded this repository uh, because this repository is required when we are going to install the MongoDB on a Kubernetes cluster. So in this official repository, we have some instructions that we have to follow in order, in order to install the MongoDB on Kubernetes cluster. So here we can find the documentation and we have to follow these steps that are mentioned here. So first we have to install the MongoDB operator and after that we will be going to install the MongoDB. So here uh, if we go to the steps, so first we have to clone the repository and like I told you that I have already cloned the repository uh, that is here that I have opened in the VS code as well. This is that repository that I have cloned and now let's move to the next steps. So the next step is to uh, we can find the next steps here in this section which is the procedure and here first we have to create some custom resources for the mongodb operator so let's uh, just copy this command and let me open my terminal here let me just clear up and uh, let me just run this command so this will create a custom resource with name uh, mongodb community and we can verify that by running this command so let's verify that. So here we can see that we have one custom resource with name mongodb community dot mongodb community dot mongodb dot com. And after that, uh, we have to install some roles and role bindings. So let me just copy this command and uh, let's do one thing. Let's uh, create a namespace as well because I want to keep all the mongodb related stuff in one namespace only. So let me create a namespace first. So kubectl create ns uh, mongodb. And so our namespace has been created. Let me just clear up this. And now we can uh, create those roles and role bindings. And I want to create these roles and role bindings in the mongodb namespace. So uh, it has created the service account, roles and role bindings. And now we can move to the next steps. So the next step here is to just to verify if these uh, services are up and running. These uh, Kubernetes objects are there or not. So let's just verify this for the roles. And the roles that we created are in this MongoDB namespace. Yeah, so we can see that the role is created. And now let's install the operator. Okay, so now we can install the operator. So let me just copy this command and let's uh, install this in the MongoDB namespace. Okay, so it has been installed successfully. And now we can move to the next step, which is to create the MongoDB instances. And uh, before doing that, let's verify if the operator is up and running or not. So let's just verify this using this command. And uh, this is also in the same namespace, MongoDB. And here we can see our uh, Kubernetes operator is up and running. And we can just verify this on the lens ID as well. So here I have my lens ID. In the pod section, we can see that uh, our uh, Kubernetes operator is up and running. We can verify that this is our operator. And now let's install the MongoDB instances. So head back to documentation. Let's move to the previous page. And here we are done with the first step, which is install, uh, installing the Kubernetes operator. Now let's uh, deploy the MongoDB instances. So click on this link. And uh, here we should have some steps uh, that are required for installing up the MongoDB. So let's just copy this command. And we have to make one small change to this file, which is present inside this config and samples folder. And then this is that file where we have to make some modifications and uh, basically the modification that we have to make is to put the admin password 
uh, in that file. Uh, so let's just uh, go to this file. So here in the config we have samples and then uh, we can find this file here. And here we have to put the put our password. So if you take a look at this file, this is the custom resource uh, that we for which we created the custom resource definitions. And here you can see that initially this has the members S3, which means that it is going to create the three instances in a replica mode. And here we can see that that it is going to have a replica set. This is the version of the MongoDB. And after that, we can see that it is using Scram for authentication. Uh, with the MongoDB and then uh, if you take a look at this section the, this user section so here uh, we are giving the name of the user as my user and then the database uh, for the authentication is admin and then here we are uh, using the secret uh, for uh, providing of the password so the secret is present in here we can look at this section and here basically we have to put our password for MongoDB so let me put the password here as of now, I'm giving the password as 12345678 and uh, after that, uh, this is fine, I think. And if, it, if you take a look at this, these other files as well, so we have other uh, custom resource. So here we have one for the pod affinity, then we have the custom roles, then we have one for the open shift, then one we have one with the readiness probe the inbuilt, and then we have the uh, one for the TLS as well. But for this simplicity, I'm going to use the, the standard one, the standard installation. So let's uh, apply this file. So here, let me just uh, paste the command and let me put the namespace as MongoDB. Let's hit enter. And this is going to take some time to spin up those uh, uh, pods because uh, it is going to, it, it has to do a lot of things behind the scene, like it has to uh, create the persistence volume claim and as well as uh, create the three instances of the MongoDB. So let's uh, do one thing. Let's go to the lens ID and verify these things. So here we are in the lens ID and uh, we can see that it is uh, trying to create uh, the MongoDB instances. And if we go to the stateful sets, we can see that it is running as a stateful set. Uh, the installation is running as a stateful set. So we have to wait uh, for the creation of these pods. Now we can see that the first instance is uh, created and now it is creating the second instance. So it roughly took around three minutes to create the three instances. So uh, now uh, let's do one more thing. Uh, let's try to uh, edit the number of members and let's uh, increase them. Uh, just to showcase you the capability of that, how you can increase the number of instances in the cluster. So let me run that command, which is kubectl edit. And then here we have to pass the resource name, which is MongoDB community dot mongodb community dot mongodb dot com and then we have to give our resource name which was example mongodb and then the namespace which is mongodb and here we can see that currently the number of uh, members are three because in the initial configuration we uh, have the default configuration with three members but we can change them so let's uh, modify this let's uh, increase this to five from three to five and let me just save this file so now if we try to see this in the lens here we can see that it is trying to create the uh, remaining two instances as well. 
so it will be going to do all this in the step by step one instance at a time so uh, meanwhile this is going on let's uh, do the next step which is uh, let's go to the documentation and here we have one command and using this command we can basically retrieve the uh, connection strings in this format that our uh, applications can use in order to connect to the mongodb so let's just run this command and this command has to be in in some specific format like first we have to provide the um, the name of the our mongodb resource then the odd db name and then the username so the default configurations were this uh, when we uh, implied that file the default configurations the default values that were present in that file were these and we can verify them as well like the the name was this example mongodb and then the odd db was admin and then the user was my user we can verify them if we go to here and if we see this so this is the user and then this is our name metadata dot name dot name and then the third property which was the database so so this is the db with value as admin so we have to run this command and uh, uh, we, we and after that we can get these these connection strings in this format so let's just run this command kubectl kubectl get secret and then uh, our um, meta dot name was this one example hyphen mongodb then this is our database name and this is our username and then i'm passing the mongodb namespace and then uh, these are the like the default uh, uh, keywords that are provided with the command so let's run this command and now we can see that we got the connection strings this one as well as the second one which is the which is in sre format so and we got the password as well as the username so now let's use these credentials to connect to the mongodb so and for that i'm going to use the port forwarding so that i can connect the mongodb with my mongodb compass so let's check the services first kubectl will get service in the namespace mongodb it should be svc and here we have only one service which is example mongodb service so let's uh, port forward this so cube cutter port forward and we have to run this command which is service then we have to give the service name and then the namespace and the port over which we want to do the port forwarding so i want to uh, listen on port 8000 on my local machine with map to port 27017 of the mongodb service so let's hit enter so now uh, i can just connect to this uh, endpoint on my local machine so let's go to the compass so here is my compass and uh, here i have to pass the host name so that is localhost and the port is uh, 8080 and then uh, here we have to give the username so our username was my user and the password was 12345678978 let's click on connect so here you can see that we are successfully connected to the mongodb and uh, if we click on this create database let's try to create a database let me call it as test db let's give the collection name as test call and let's try to create the database so here you can see that we got uh, uh, some error like we are not authorized to execute the command on the test db so let's fix this and to fix this let's uh, create some uh, user let's create a user and let's give uh, these permissions to that particular user so for this we have to go to the lens id and here you can see that uh, our we have now five instances of the mongodb so now let's go inside this uh, the the shell of this first one and here we will be going to execute some commands in order to give create an user and give some permissions to that user so that uh, we can create the username and password so 
So let me run this command mongo and then hyphen u and then the username was my user. Here we have to provide the password. Let's pick the password. So now we are in the MongoDB shell. And now uh, we can create the uh, a, a user and uh, assign some permissions to that user. So let's use the admin DB first. Now we are switched to the admin DB. And here, uh, let me just put the command. So basically this command is going to create a role with nameless database and then it is going to give uh, uh, our admin users these privileges so let's hit enter so this operation was successful and now we can create uh, users and uh, let's uh, assign some roles to them so let me put up the command here and the command got executed successfully and here you can see the command that we are creating a user test user with password as password and then we are giving him some roles that the first role that we are assigning him is the read write which means that the user can do read and write operation on the database with name db1 and then the second role that we we are giving to this user is the read role on the database 2 you can see there and this is the th uh, third role which we are giving him for the list databases and on the database admin so now uh, let's exit out of from this or let's uh, let's do one thing let's go to the compass and from there let's try to connect to the mongodb using using this user so here is the compass and now i can give the user name as test user and the password was password for that p a w s w d and if we try to click on connect yeah so we are able to connect to this uh, from this user and we have the two databases now db1 and db2 so let's uh, click on db1 and now let's try to create a collection so let's give the name as test call and see if we are able to uh, create this collection or not so yes uh, we are able to create the collection and let's create a record here as well so let me create insert a document and let's insert it empty yeah, so here we can see that we are able to perform the read and write operations on this database uh, test uh, uh, this database which is db1 uh, because we have given the permission read write permission for to this user on the db1 and now let's try to do the same on the db2 as well so here we are in the db2 let's try to click on create collection let's give the name as test call so here we can see that we are getting some error which is unauthorized on db2 which means that our permissions are uh, working perfectly. The roles that are assigned to this user are working as per the expectations. And for the application, we can use the connection string, this one. So our uh, applications can use this connection string in order to connect to the MongoDB. So that's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one.